hello everybody and a special welcome to all the new subscribers uh, thank you so much for your support and i really do hope uh, you like the content on our youtube channel Groningen um this time timing uh, timing a watch i'd like to show you how to do that um, and a bit more um, uh, theory but i know and it's going to be worth it. So um, bear with me, uh, we're going to have fun. Here you can see the balance wheel, the balance spring, and the escapement here, the pellet fork and the escape wheel. There are only two ways to time your movement. And that is by adjusting the length of your balance spring and adjusting the weight of your balance ring and that's here but as you can see this balance ring hasn't got any screws or weights so with this particular movement you can only adjust the length the working length of your balance spring um, I know the terms balance spring and hair spring are commonly used, but there's a beautiful definition plaque in the Science Museum in London. Whenever you got a chance, please visit the Science Museum in London. It's beautiful, London, England. Um, the definition is very clear. This balance spring is a hairspring well that sounds silly but um, well, maybe the easiest uh, every poodle is a dog but net, not every dog is a poodle this balance spring is a hairspring but not every hairspring is a balance spring a hairspring only says it's a very small tiny spring with a particular function and this hairspring happens to be a balance spring. <laughs> I do hope that makes sense. <laughs> so, but uh, I often make a mistake as well. Uh, we've been calling it a hairspring for a very long time, but it is true. I think the official uh, name will be balance spring. That happens to be a hairspring. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the timing, I would like to take, take one step back and show you a tiny bit of theory, Dutch theory, and uh, then it's so much easier to see what we're doing in the timing. So uh, a bit of theory. Well, what we got here is a very happy Apple charger. Um, Isaac Newton used an apple, why don't we use an apple charger? Well, I was calling it Dutch theory because this man, the man and his wig, is Christian Huygens. Uh, and he came up with a brilliant concept. Uh, he made the first uh, physics law and um, that is the pendulum law of Huygens. And it sounds uh, um, kind of hard to follow. It is that simple once you've seen it. The first physics law made by Huygens is that the amplitude of the pendulum doesn't affect the, uh, the time it takes to go back and forth. It's a bit simple, but I hope that makes sense. Simplified, but I hope it makes sense. And that is, once you've seen it, it's that simple. Amplitude is this in degrees. And his physics law was tick tock, tick tock, low amplitude is exactly the same as tick tock, tick tock. Make sense? Small amplitude, tick tock, tick tock. Is the same as tick tock tick tock. So the amplitude won't affect 
the time it takes to go back and forth. The only way you can change the rate is by making it smaller, go fast, or making it longer, the pendulum slow. So if you got a pendulum like this, the only way to affect the rate going fast or slow is by changing the length of the pendulum fast, slow. And a pendulum is exactly the same as a balance spring in a watch movement. So if we make the balance spring shorter, it will go fast. If we make it lo longer, it will go slow. One thing is a term you have to remember is that the end bit I'm holding here is called the stud. In Dutch, the piton, and that is the end bit of the pendulum. And once you see that, it will make sense. Well, do you see here the stud, the piton, and that is the end bit of the pendulum, the end. And here it goes inwards, inwards, inwards. And here are the timing pins in Dutch compass. And that is simply the sliding bit to make the pendulum or balance spring longer or shorter. There are only two ways to affect the rate of a watch movement because the rest are gear ratios and you cannot uh, make some gears or teeth go away. So you cannot change the gear, yeah, you can, but for the timing you will not change the gear ratio. So all the timing is done in the length, the effective length of your balance spring. And again, I will show you later on, there's a second way of uh, um, timing a watch, and that is by uh, the, the weights in the balance ring. But here, it's just uh, the timing pins of the balance spring. I do hope that makes sense. And once you have got a visual of the Apple charger with the timing pins making it shorter and longer, same here. We have timing pins. Please uh, use a soft material like plastic or wood so you don't make any scratches here. You can see now I'm making the pendulum longer. I'm going towards, towards the stud, the end bit. And now, get rid of the fiber. And now we make the pendulum shorter because we go away from the stud, the end bit. See that? So now we make the pendulum shorter. And it will go fast, shorter, fast, longer, slow. And if you visualize the pendulum, I think that will make sense. Underneath here, the timing pins are two actual pins uh, sliding side by side of the balance spring. And here you see usually A are or the S of slow, the R of retard, or the F from fast. Usually you see them there. That's simply the meaning of those letters. Um, so that's how you time your movement by simply sliding the timing pins next to the balance spring, what happens to be a hairspring. <laughs> The second way of changing the timing of a movement, you can see here, in, see here in a Rolex, you can see here the weights in 
the balance rim. And here you can see only the stud, the end of the pendulum, the end bit here. So no um, timing pins, geen kompas. So by changing these weights in and out, you can change the timing. And uh, most of my students already see me do this. Once you see it, it is that simple. <laughs> Bear with me. Fast, slow, fast, slow, fast. I hope that that makes sense. <laughs> In order to make the weights go outwards or inwards, uh, Rolex has made a small tool. Well, this is the Rolex tool and here you can change the position of the weights. It's crucial that the position of the weights on both sides stays the same, otherwise you create an imbalance. Absolutely cru crucial. Well, here you can see there the shape of the small screw and here you can see uh, the actual degrees you are moving it with the weight so you know exactly on both sides the same amount uh, of angle in degrees you give it well, this tool, well, well, this tool is patented by Rolex, so no one can use this particular tool. So Omega has made a completely different tool for their um, coaxial, <laughs> um, and it is different because there is a square for the for the weights but otherwise you see a completely different tool one last well warning uh, when you time your uh, mechanical watch movement you can push here with a soft material like some pack wood or here some plastic so you don't make any scratches but sometimes you have to push here be very 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 careful because if you damage the hairspring uh, um, well you don't have to time it again <laughs> but uh, um, it is very fragile so be very careful when you adjust your timing pins over here it's more safe to do it over here but sometimes uh, it is a, a bit more difficult well, I do hope that makes sense. The length of the pendulum uh, makes it go fast or slow. When you go close to the stud, you go fast because the effective length is longer. And if you go the other way, it will run fast. And I hope you remember if the weights go in, you go fast. And if the weights go out, you go slow. I do hope that makes sense. Um, and please be very careful with the hairspring, which is a balance spring. <laughs> um, because it is very fragile. Um, please try this at home. Um, if there are any questions, please leave them in the comments. Or suggestions for future topics or uh, things you've seen and not quite uh, uh, clear, please let me know. Uh, Thank you for your attention and thank you for your support. Uh, I really enjoy uh, the, uh, reading the comments and uh, hope to see you soon. See you. Bye bye.